Hello everybody, and welcome to my second tutorial on the Essential Engine, and more specifically on the iNesis source code that's available for purchase. Uh, my goal in these tutorials is to give you an overview of how iNesis works, and how, with some small modifications, you can make it into your own a template for your own creation. What I covered last time was how to manage height maps. I won't be covering any of that again, so if you didn't see my previous tutorial, please watch it first. I'll be picking up where that one left off. In this tutorial, I'll be covering how objects work in the INESIS uh, source code. Now, I'm covering mostly just the server side things. I haven't gotten into the client side too much yet. But by the end of this tutorial, what you'll be able to do is easily manage and create objects in the essential editor and load them into the INESIS world. Uh, and that's both the objects that currently exist, such as trees and stairs and blocks but also items that don't exist, like tree, uh, like uh, houses or any other objects you can come up with. So I'll show you how to load both of those into the world fairly effectively. Um, again, what's also not covered, I haven't gone over grass or materials or blocks or water yet. That'll be in a later tutorial. But let's go ahead and start with just the objects, uh, an overview and how they work. So if you haven't played Essential, uh, basically some of the things you can do in the world are add and move objects. So uh, I can add things like stairs in here, uh, I can add trees, and uh, torches, uh, these trees will actually grow. Uh, I can add doors, and with these doors I can do things like open and close them. So what I'll talk about today is how we can add these objects, how their states work, how the scheduling of the growing works and you can see how it grows there, and also how you can start from the editor and load in all these objects uh, from default. So uh, let's go ahead and jump straight in. So in the editor, the base class here in the shared folder is object, and this is what all the objects in iNesis load from, or inherit. Um, so they're all part of what's called a scheduled object we'll get to very shortly. But essentially what this does is just store all the things you expect about an object, its ID, position, uh, compare functions, uh, UID randomize. Uh, a creation function is important, uh, and this will be inherited, uh, you can see it's virtual, by the classes below it. The init function uh, here is add, sets the area, whether it's a ground object or not, and sets the schedule. So this, this, ob this base class basically stores all the important things about objects, and at the bottom here is also really important. Uh, this object container is a um, basically how it how Inesis manually manages the object types. So it's a uh, pointer to all the object types that are available. And initially, all we have right now are static, torch, door, and tree are the only ones that are available. If you want to add another type, you have to add it here as well into the container. Uh, and this, these three helper functions are used throughout the application to get references to pointers. So all requests for adding and objects are done through pointers uh, to the um, object container and then actually goes down to the um, object type pointer. So that's the base class. Each one of these base classes is inherited by a detail class. So door, uh, and this will have something like, a, something like an angle and a state. So you can see it has an update function that helps open and close the door, uh, whether it's opened or closed also. Uh, in, these, in, in the enum here. Um, a static class is things like the stairs. They don't actually change throughout the gameplay, uh, so they don't have a state or an angle. They still have to be managed. Uh, a torch has some particles for the fire, but again, everything else is pretty much the same thing. Uh, a tree has a little more information because it has to grow, uh, so it's actually a scheduled object. So in here, you're going to see um, a little more detail about the schedule. It's a set schedule function which the other ones are not going to have, and schedule updates. Uh, but as I'm, I'm talking about schedule, it's important to talk about now is this schedule class is essentially a very small wrapper function that checks. Uh, at startup, it's created, initialized, and every 15 seconds, it's going to check to see if any objects that are of type schedule object, which is all objects in this, uh, need to be updated. So every 15 seconds, it's going to go through its list uh, of schedule objects and call the schedule update function. Now, as I mentioned before, in this case, actually tree is the only one that has a schedule update function. 
things like uh, torches are not going to have one because they don't get updated. Uh, so if you want to add a new object in your world that was updated every 15 seconds or had a uh, time portion to it, you'd have to you'd have to subscribe to the schedule update function here. Um, so all this really does is, for some reason it creates 10 parts, I'm not really sure why, it's got 10 schedulers that are always running and making sure that everything's up to date uh, and updating the world as needed. And this will also publish to all the clients as well automatically, and we'll see that in a bit. Another important uh, class in the shared folder is the ground objects and objects classes. Now for all intents and purposes these are very very similar files. Uh, a ground object is currently just a tree so there's more information for the tree whether it's being grown or at its max grown or not. So there's a separate whole function for setting up trees mostly in the initialize function. Um, so when it's created, it actually has to be initialized to know what state it's in. Um, uh, but the objects function is for everything else. So it's, it manages all the as a list of all objects, along with same with the ground objects. It's just a collection of all the objects in the world, and with all the helper functions needed to maintain them. So from here, you can you know, manage your states for things like doors. You have all your actors. Uh, your draw functions are all managed through here. So this is a collection of all of these objects. Ground objects actually only has trees. Uh, we'll get into grass and blocks at another time, but essentially objects and ground objects are the two classes that contain all of the objects of these types. And schedule I mentioned before just manages the scheduler. That's the main thing to know about the shared folder. Uh, in the world class we have a few functions that are important. Um, so it's the change height we saw earlier um, set grass is for grass we're not going to get into. Um, set object is your kind of go to set uh, object function. This is what actually adds static objects to the world, uh, not including trees. Again, there's a ground objects function for that. Similar to the other files, these are very similar uh, with some small, some small differences in the, uh, the functions they call down the road. But set objects is for your doors and your stairs. Uh, set object is for your trees. Set object state will do things like open doors, close doors. Set ground state will do things like grow the trees. So th all these functions here are what manage it on the server side and then it gets published to the clients after the updates made with the distribute function. Same as the height map. And these call the standard, uh, standard requests set right uh, object, set right ground object. I know you also have one for states down here as well. So in the commands folder similar to the set height you're going to have the function uh, calls as well both from client and server side. That's most of what I wanted to talk about with the world class. Uh, the last one I want to talk about was the area class and again this is the custom area class not the one from the central engine generically. Uh, you can see here it has uh, pointers to the objects file we just talked about and the ground objects class we just talked about so these again house collections of objects, the base class. So this is how you can manage all the objects and ground objects within an area. And also provides these two functions here for managing and changing those. So whenever an object is added or removed, it goes through here. And whenever a ground object is added or removed, it goes through here. Uh, makes the update and then distributes it to all the clients. So that's basically the, the overview of objects that I wanted to go through. What I really want to cover now is uh, how we can go about loading objects in from the essential editor, both ones that exist in the world today of uh, the Anesis world, like, like stairs and trees, and also how you can bring things like houses in if that's what you want to do. So uh, let's hop into that right now. Okay, so what we want to do is let's start with saying we want to take the stairs uh, and we want to load these in through the world editor. Now, the way objects work with the essential world, uh, now we've talked about objects in the Unisys world, which is overridden by the objects class. The standard object works very differently. Uh, all objects have a class. In this case, the stair class is of type static. And so when the world is created, uh, my, my test world, if you remember my little smiley face, um, you can drop objects into it 
uh, and they inherit those classes. So I just added my stairs, and you can see inherits a static type, uh, which is good for what we're trying to do here. So if I drop a few stairs in, let's say we want to load these into the world. Uh, we'll do that through the world class uh, in the same place that we loaded in the height maps. So how we can start this is with all objects, and if you look at the tu any tutorial in Essential, you need to first create a memory location to store the collection of objects. Um, you can create your own custom objects or you can use the ones that exist. So if you look at game.object, which is the base class for all objects, um, this class gives you all the helper functions you need, all virtual. Uh, most of them are defaulted. When it's null, you have to actually do it yourself. Uh, when it's not null, you can use the default. All the draws are there. Drop a pair, you need to override yourself. But this gives you the starting point for any object. Additionally, if you look at this comment, there are a few classes that are done automatically for you. Um, and this one catches my eye, the game.static. So let's take a look at that one, since we are trying to load in a static object. So if I look at game.static, I can see that it, it stores all my positions for me, which is great. Uh, the create it really does everything I need it to do. So I think I'm going to create a collection of game statics to, to do this with. Um, and now that we know we want to store our objects, we need to create a memory location for them. Since it's a game object we're storing from the world editor, we can use the um, game.objectMemex, which is predetermined uh, object memex that can be done used for the uh, world.new function. It adds them all in when the world is created, it can add items into this for you automatically, which is really handy. So we're going to do game.static and um, give it a name and call it items for now. Uh, it's going to uh, container store our stairs. Now we have our object uh, collection. Before we call the new world function, we actually need to uh, go ahead and uh, allocate that memory. So in this section here, we're going to do the, the, um, the set, ob uh, set object type function, and we're going to say anything. Uh, we're going to use items or anything of type uh, obj static. So this all this will do is basically say all items of type static will be loaded into the items uh, repository. So as the world's loading, it's going to anything that says object static is going to drop into items. Exactly what we want to do. Okay, so now that we have our uh, memory location, uh, what we're going to do is in the same place here, where we're going to be loading and checking each area for the height map change. While we have that area open, let's go ahead and see if there's any objects in that area, and that can be done by uh, repeating, going through the array of items that we created and seeing things there. So pretty simple. If uh, items dot elms, so basically if there are any elements in the uh, in the memory location, then we have things. If not, skip. So from here, I want to uh, repeat all, and this is another one of those helpful uh, functions he has uh, essential put in to help us loop through a collection. So that's all you have to do to loop through a collection is repeat all items. Uh, so I want to create... So what I want to do is now I have all my items, I want to start setting them into the custom world. And so obviously before I can do that, I need to find out which function we use to set those items. So if you remember I scroll down here to uh, set object, this is the one that adds objects to the world. So it takes in a world, it takes in a position, an angle, and an object parameters pointer. So we have our, our world reference, we have our position reference, and our angle, because this will be in the matrix of the item from the world editor. However, we don't have this. Uh, and what this is, is in, if you go to the object here, that's the list of attributes it does. It tells you that it's static, it tells you that it's not constant, it tells you it's got an icon. These are the parameters of the object. And they're stored through the UID of the object, which is this number here. 